Welcome to Task TV. My name is Ganay Evinç. I co-chair the Turkish American National Steering Committee. And this is my program, Task Roots. Uh, today we have wonderful guests representing the Turkish American Business Development Council in Istanbul. And the chairman and the founder, Mr. Ur Terzuoğlu is with us and the press advisor, uh, Ilhan Geçki. Uh, well, welcome my guests, Ur Bey. Uh, Ilhan Bey, how are you? Well, thank you so much for your presentation. And thanks, Ilhan, also joining us. And thank also the uh, people who are working on this transmission, let's say. And uh, it's a good start. And we hope that this will be a large television station in the future. Thank you very much, Ur Abi. Uh, we call you Abi. You are like the Please brother. Please do some. <laughs> you are like the brother of all of us, uh, uh, Turkish Americans, friends of Turkey, both in Turkey as well as in the United States. You do great work. You're such a bridge builder. Uh, and I was just going to dive right into it. Uh, but before that, uh, I'd like to mention that task. Uh, reach, reaches out to the broadest uh, diversity of Turkish Americans nationwide, people of all walks of life. And we are bridge builders uh, in the principle of solidarity within diversity. Um, and uh, I also want to thank my, my, my team here. Uh, Task TV started about uh, last uh, summer, and then we really were catapulted into modern uh, uh, high, tech, high technology um, new streaming. Uh, now we have around 2 million viewers per month. Uh, and everyone's been waiting for this program to talk about U.S.-Turkish economic relations, business uh, in the future, what it holds for all of us. So I'm going to dive in. Urabi, you've been representing the uh, Turkish business community for at least three decades. Um, what drew you to trade and commerce, and how far have Turkish companies come in volume of business with Europe, Middle East, Africa, and particularly the United States? Well, thank you. Let me start with this. Um, one should say, how come you came so much familiar with the Turkish-American relations? Uh, I was born in naturally in Turkey, in Istanbul, but registered in Milas, my hometown. Uh, we have a big house, and in the garden, we have two more small houses, and there were two American families living there. They were both uh, my father's employees, and I grew with their children together. In our garden, we used to play together, and uh, they used to learn Turkish, I used to learn English when I was three years old. So my adventure actually started then. So saying this, it's an old memory. Uh, I went to local school and then to an American college in Istanbul, Robert College. And uh, then I went to California at my master, and I had an office in California, in Los Angeles, in, um, in a nice place, and we had that office worked for 15 years, doing movie business international, but actually trying to promote also Turkish movies in the um, United States try to show uh, we know how difficult it is to release a dub version of a movie. Then we started doing co-production with the American companies, and we have done several movies, and one of them was Your, which came out in 3,000 theaters in America. Uh, actually, it didn't do very big business, but it was well received. And uh, we had some movies done also with the late President Ronald Reagan. And the first movie we made, I Lost, He Lost, 
Second movie, I said to him, look, let's find another actor. He agreed. He was the director again. We lost. The third project, we said, let's find the producer and the director and the actor. And we put only the, the finance on this. He agreed. Then we made money. The movie worked. We collected almost all our losses. Then he became the governor. Then he became the president. So this is my um, small note, how it came into the picture. And uh, my father was representing U.S. companies. He was buying all uh, Turkish tobacco for them. And the name, uh, the Camel Cigarettes, Turkish blended tobacco, Turkish blended tobacco was came with him in 1933, can you imagine? And uh, since then, I had always good relations with the United States and the, the citizens of America. And uh, I uh, received their help from time to time for many uh, difficulties I faced in my past years. And uh, in other words, we grew together to meet in the best for the both countries. And this was 1985 when later Zalt said, let's form a, a, a real private institute and call it Turkish American Business Men Operation. And we did. And the first meeting uh, was in Istanbul, 19 February, 85. All U.S. ambassadors and the U.S. banks, general managers in Europe, they all came. It was a huge opening. The organization went so fast and big, and we started uh, putting our uh, hand on everything to create more friendly collaboration between the United States and Turkey. 19, so 2014, uh, after so many years, I turned over my post to another friend. And uh, sometimes things doesn't work, and it didn't work. And uh, that organization slowly, slowly went down, and uh, I saw in, 19, in 2015 that there is another, there should be another organization to replace the previous one, take over in a way. And we did, and we formed the American Turkish Business Development Council. And we did not go and look for large number of members. We said we keep it with 100 Turkish and American companies together. And we're working on this, and we're improving. We have offices in um, Istanbul, in Izmir, in Ankara, and in Adana. And now with Ilham Bey, we're organizing America, and he will tell us also to the listeners, to the watchers, let's say, uh, what we are targeting to reach and to go into the details of the people in 50 uh, different locations. And so far, he has advanced a lot. He will explain to us. I don't want to go into that detail. Uh, saying all this, uh, Turkey has relation with all the neighbors, even with Greece. We're having a little bit of uh, arguments, fights. We invited the Minister of Foreign Affairs. He came in last night. He was enjoying his night last night and today, and I think he's very happy to be here. And soon our Minister of Foreign Affairs will go to Greece and meet him. 
there is no reason of Greece to fight against Turkey because Turkey has always helped Greece, even during this First World War or in the Second World War. So, one thing I should point out here, talking about Cyprus, Cyprus was suddenly taken over by a terrorist colonel and a normal elected president of Cyprus. There was one Cyprus at that time, <coughs> was kicked out. But Turkey has done their best. And the military government in, in Greece collapsed. And in parallel also, this terrorist colonel also ran away from Cyprus and democracy came back to Cyprus again. But then the control was lost and they start terrible things and the Turkish army had to interfere to save the people, Turkish origin people in Cyprus. And we lost about 15,000 of them in a couple of months. Now we have two governments there. They should be okay. I mean, look at Europe. Europe was one piece once. There was Ottoman Empire. There was French Empire. There was Ottoman Empire. There was Roman Empire. That's all. Now we have so many countries in Balkans, so many countries in uh, in uh, in Western or Eastern. Europe. Why not in Cyprus there should not be two different countries, republics? They are both republics. So I hope they will come to an agreement at the end of this month. There's a meeting in, in Geneva or Zurich uh, with presidents of the United States, England, European Council, Turkey and Greece, they will agree on something. So this is the general politics, but Turkey is working with America. They are good clients for Turkey, and I think Turkey is also good client for America. Now we're always talking about the commercial exchange, trade, we call it. Now, once it was $300,000, today it is $20 million. billion. Why not, they said, two presidents, it should be $100 billion. I hope it will be $100 billion soon. And we have to work for this. And we are working on this. And the project which Ilhan Bey will explain is one of the main elements that we can reach to 100 billion. Because America is not Chicago, Boston, or California only. There are 51 in total, 50, I should say, uh, important places to reach, important uh, people to contact important businessmen to contact. And also these people living over there, business people, they don't know about Turkey because Turkish authorities, they are doing their best to give information for the American trade business people. But you cannot reach everywhere. It's a large country. So there should be an organization also to help them. So we are not competing with anybody. We're trying to help what is missing. That's all. And we are going to fill in what is linking and stop that link. And I hope we'll succeed with this. It is a, it's a must. If we cannot do it, somebody will come and do it. There is no other way. So, 
Turkey is doing very well with African countries. That was a good point of uh, Mr. Erdogan, who pointed out that Africa is our best client. And uh, to do this, Turkish Airlines flies to every single big cities in Africa. So when you have a transportation, you can reach to business people more easily. We are all saying, the village you don't go is not yours. It's a very old saying in Turkish, I don't know. It's a maybe exact translation is that, but it says, yol yoksa gidemediğin köy senin değildir. Bu kadar. Turkey is full of highways. Turkey is full of airports. Turkey is doing everything possible to increase the life standard of people. One thing which is important is naturally politics in America. Sometimes you cannot control. We cannot control. We cannot convince. But we should insist and try to convince them. This is one example is the, uh, the famous F-400 from Russia. Why did we get them from Russia? Very open, because United States refused to sell us the S-400s, same type. So how mean, can we defend our country? You mean the Patriots? Patriots, yes. Yeah. How can we defend our country? We need such equipment. Uh, if you don't give it, we'll buy it from the neighbor. It's very normal. I think uh, one important uh, example of how business actually helps relations uh, is Turkey and Israel. Uh, Absolutely. Get... I agree with you. And uh, there is no reason <laughs> It's very comedy. I mean, look, do you know that in Tel Aviv, the Turkish newspaper Hurriyet comes out every day in Turkish? I, there's, uh, I think, 250,000. I have Turkish from Milas, my hometown, 3,000 families living in uh, Israel. And continuously, I am corresponding with them. They always come during Bayram, during holidays. They enjoy, they see their old houses, their old friends. We exchange. If somebody, an old man dies in Milas, you know how many telegrams I receive from Israel. Very good. I'm going to turn, I'm going to, turn to, 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 I'm going to two countries, the public. Yes. We are here. I'm going to ask Ihan a question. Uh, and we'll come back to many points you've raised. Uh, Ihan, uh, you're the press advisor at the Turkish I'm not the press advisor. There is some confusion that it's the advisor to president, Mr. Terzoğlu. So, <laughs> so it looks like it's press point <laughs> advice, but that's fine. Go ahead, Gina. <laughs> uh, actually, actually, Ilhan, Ilhan is our, our only <laughs> physical rep in America. <laughs> he has my full power to to guide us, let's say. Thank you, Urbe. Go ahead, Gunnar. Thank you, Urbe. Go ahead. Uh, uh, president, advisor to the president uh, of TABDC, uh, Ihan Bey. Tell us about the mission and the vision of TABDC. Yeah. Uh, let, let me talk to you about that. ATBDC, American Turkish Business Development Council, uh, was basically established to promote the business relations between the countries and the firms. Uh, and when we are doing that, we always focus on FDI, foreign direct investment into Turkey. But then Urbe, under his leadership, we said, well, there are many Turkish companies. Actually, they are not taking benefit of good relations between the countries. You know, they are good allies to countries, even though they have some political problems here and there. That's fine but not taking good advantage of that. 
So we said, why don't we establish a business network for those Turkish companies, members of ATBDC, and we, the Turkish Americans in the U.S., would support them locally. And when I say that, you know, the people should have a good understanding of the U.S., for instance, the state of New York, in which New York City located, the state of New York's economy is larger than Russia. The state of Illinois, in which Chicago located, uh, the economy of that country is, you know, the almost two sides of Turkey. So uh, what I'm saying, this is a big country. For instance, many construction uh, developer companies, they go to Russia, they are being very successful, they do a good job. And we have just, if they focus on the state of New York, they can have another Russia there. Actually, you know, it's larger than Russia. So if you look at it, we have 50 states in the U.S., and every state is different than each other. For instance, Texas is more energy business, and if you look at New York, more finance, the uh, high tech. So uh, we say the Turkish companies, when they want to enter into the U.S. market, they should work within that business network decide what part of the U.S., what region or state they should focus, and then develop business. Uh, and when we do that, to be honest with you, because all these people focus on, you know, Patriots, the Raytheon, all those defense sectors, because that is U.S. products, they are selling Turkey, a NATO member. Uh, Turkey doesn't have those products before, and now we have some, you know, the defense-related products, successful products, but we are selling to African countries, Pakistan, other countries in Turkey, but not to the U.S. So when you look at it, people always focus on the government relations, but businesses develop trade, not governments. Governments are, you know, mostly run by politicians, and they have their own agenda. For instance, Last 30 years, China and U.S. relations never been perfect. They always have problems. But if you look at it, Walmart, Walmart is the largest retailers globally. If you look at Walmart, non-food products, not food, non-food products, 90% of Walmart products made in China. China. Walmart doesn't care what Trump or Biden say about China. They are going to do the business. And we encourage Turkish business not to focus on politics. Politics is between the countries and maybe affecting defense-related business. But it doesn't affect your, you know, the export to consumer products business to the U.S. And we really truly believe not governments, but businesses, private firms, uh, even including publicly traded companies, but the firms, companies, they develop trade and business and in the long run, it helps both countries to have good relationship. As you give example, like uh, the relationship between Turkey and Israel, because we have very good trade relations with Israel and it works but perfectly fine. Uh, so to answer your question, Urbe gave me that, you know, the role to coordinate business network in the U.S., and when we are doing that, uh, I am based in actually, I'm very close to you. I'm in Delaware right now. I'm in Delaware and New York. So we have actually uh, our other uh, coordinators in Texas, California, Florida, Michigan, Illinois, all over the countries. And they are member of the ATBDC, uh, the association. And we are helping to develop those, that business network to assist Turkish companies to grow their exports to enter into the U.S. market more knowledgeably. And as the association under Urbe's leadership, we support that. Very, very good. You know, uh, how does, there's so many Turkish American or U.S. Turkish uh, economic relations oriented groups. Uh, and do you work with them? There's a Turkish Union of Chambers of Commerce. I think they're starting, they have started a trade center in Chicago. Uh, and then there is a Turkish American uh, Business Council, Taik, and there is, of course, the U.S. Chamber that works closely with the Turkish Union of Cham Unions of Chambers of Commerce, um, and they all seem to have a role to play uh, in U.S. Turkish uh, business relations. And how does how do they how do the, all, all the groups uh, work together? Yeah. Fit no, we, uh, very good question. We actually work with them. Urbe explained that very well. 
uh, this is, you know, we are not competing with any of those organizations. But as you know, most of those organizations are somehow government related. What we bring to table, we are not related. We have good relationship with both Turkish government and the US government, but we are not related. We are here, so our agenda is helping the private businesses, the firms, the individuals to grow. Government, okay, we appreciate the, you know, Turkish government, Erdogan administration, and the, before it was Trump, they put that hundred billion dollars cool. trade between countries. That's a great agenda. So we respect that and we support that. But uh, Taik and the, you know, the team, all those organizations, they are doing their roles. And when they are doing, they do advocacy and other roles as well. Ours is our focus is really the regional chamber of commerce. For instance, I contacted the Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, the Greater Philadelphia, and we are bringing their members to with our members who wants to enter into the U.S. market, and we want to do that local level. The majority of the U.S. states, as Urbe said, 50 states, but we focus on seven regions, and our focus is completely private sector. And we want to basically help our members, priorities our members. Urbe's uh, association, ATBDC, uh, as you know, the members like Chalak Holding, large corporations or small ones, some, for instance, tech firms. We have tech firms members and they are very successful. And we believe uh, for the tech sector, not the developers, not, not like programming, but service providers. Turkey is doing really great. For instance, Otlu Technokent, E2 Technokent, those are the university technokents. Very good, you know, the startups, now they are developed, they are actually not early stage anymore. They did phenomenal job in Turkey and Eastern Europe in their region. So they are ready to enter into the US, but what they need, they need support and some local knowledge to assist their growth. And that's what we provide. So to, again, you know, summarize my answer to your question, Team Taik, they are doing really great job. Uh, we are appreciative, but our role is different than their roles. There's also, I think, the Turkish American uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, Industry, Tachi, based right. in New York. Uh, and uh, that's homegrown right here in the United States. Right. Of course, there's also the American Turkish Council, uh, which is uh, primarily defense uh, focused. Exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, from the Turkish American community, we pretty much say we are more than soldiers. We are good soldiers. That's that's no no doubt about that. NATO's second biggest and most one of the most ready militaries in the world. Uh, so both sea, sky, and uh, the and the uh, on la and land, but um, but I uh, you know the diversity is important in the relationship and the industries that we'd like to explore. Uh, are non-defense, uh, actually. Exactly. One program uh, that we have engaged in, I live in Maryland, uh, and, I'm, and I'm a uh, political appointee of the governor on Middle Eastern affairs uh, com and communities in the, in the, in the state, uh, as well as the Secretary of State program, which we call Sister State. And Maryland's sister state is Kojeli. Okay? But... Uh, and there's a focus on that. What kind of focus? It could be, for example, uh, biotechnology. Uh, one amazing uh, collaboration we created was in cybersecurity between uh, uh, cybersecurity education in Maryland and cybersecurity education in Turkey. Um, so uh, one, con one state that's very interested is Michigan, and particularly focusing on uh, auto industry. Exactly. For example, so the sister state program that the United States is taking up, which is quite different than sister city. Sister city has a cultural focus. Uh, sister state has a uh, business and commerce and uh, uh, education and a wider focus, wider areas of activity uh, is av is availing itself to improving uh, interaction between businesses such as in Maryland and Kojeli. We are so Michigan is interested. And so that might be a good fit for Bursa. 
Why yeah. not? Yes. Yes, definitely. And Nurtan Ural is a business leader in Michigan uh, and uh, a very close friend of mine. Um, and uh, we are interested in Maryland for, in a second state our second region of Turkey and on our mind is Izmir, for example, because the Baltimore port, the port of Baltimore and the port of Izmir are very important uh, uh, connectors. Uh, so, but I had a question. We are having a multipolar world now. Uh, we've diverted from east, west versus east, east versus west in a bipolar world. And we see Russia, China, the EU, the United States being for market access as well as political influence. So how do we navigate the guiding principles? Is it uh, value for money? Is it production volume? Is it market transparency, anti-corruption, social values, popular culture, democracy, human rights? Or is it a combination of this? How do, how do we navigate that? And I, by the way, you know, I would agree with you, you know, when it comes to China, uh, you know, first of all, our, our GDP in the United States, 70 percent retail consumerism. And we are very connected to China. Even our Fourth of July, little flags that we put on our cupcakes, little flags that we they sell at the store here, the party store for whatever, five cents. Um, you know, we buy from China. Uh, the U.S. the little U.S. flag. So, uh, so, and I think it will continue that way. Uh, and so, well, how how do the countries and businesses navigate this uh, environment of a bi of a multipolar world? Uh, Urabi may want to answer that question first, and then I'll tell my opinion. Urabi, would you like to opine on that? Uh, can you repeat the question? Yes, yes, Urabi. You have Russia, EU, China. We have multipoles in this world being for market access and political influence. You have the United States, of course, a close friend and ally of Turkey. Uh, so how do we navigate uh, is the multipolar world uh, in terms of business uh, and how these countries in a way, sometimes politically and then negatively compete against each other. Uh, if you do business with Russia, will you face sanctions from the U.S.? If you do business with China, same same way. Uh, how do how do business navigate? And I, I'll take you to the next question: Are sanctions effective? Do they bring countries together uh, into some kind of a voluntary and happy <laughs> compliance uh, and collaboration, or do they push countries apart? Um, so that basically, that's a, in one of the directions I want to take this question. Um, when, a, when a country or a, a republic becomes so big, now let me go back and say, Turkey was uh, in the land of Turkey, as you know, but now having several operations and saving bottlenecks, cleaning bottlenecks, let's say, cleaning disasters around the area, starting with Libya, Tunisia, Azerbaijan, in Balkan, in many countries. Turkey became, as your word, army of the territory. And Turkey, is not begging from China or Russia to do business. They are coming and saying, we are offering you this because America is not giving you the materials you want. That's the key point. I mean, America, as you said, our ally, our friend, which is not Today, it goes way back to 1820. 1820 looks like 200 years old friendship. And uh, Turkey is still, still faithful to, to the signatures given to his allies. But unfortunately, we all know that in Syria, the Turkish army has done their best 
what Russia wanted to do. They stopped them. But there is a kind of Irish operation, and the United States has given all the military support to a group to fight against Irish. But today we are looking and seeing beyond that, we're catching them. We are fighting with them, arresting them, because they are doing the terrorism. And in a way, unwillingly, I'm sure unwillingly, nobody had the intention in America to help a terrorist group, but they are helping a terrorist group. <laughs> this I can say you openly, because I know I have contacts in that area, and they are all suffering. They thought that the uh, it was not true, but unfortunately, it is the fact that they, these groups are receiving a large help from the United States. I don't know why. We don't know why. I hope we are mistaken. Now, saying all this, doing business, as Ilan Bey said, Walmart's 90% of materials they're selling is Chinese. What's the difference between China and Russia? If you look at it from an American side, I think Russia is more friendly to America than Russia could be. Russia, China is not... Uh, will never be friendly to America. We have seen it with the late president, what they have done. What have happened with the, the boat in Suez Canal? We know what the boat was carrying. Now, all these things, we are not comfortable. Personally, I am not comfortable. I think Turkish nation is also not comfortable to do business with the Chinese, but we are doing business, and we cannot refuse. We are doing business. It's a free country. We are doing business. We are exporting to China. They are selling materials. To they used to sell a lot of toys. Now we don't buy any more toys from China. But we still go ahead with good relations with the Russians, I mean. They are doing a nuclear plant in Mersin with the Turkish company together. Uh, maybe it's a neighbor relations. Today, we see also in the movies many scenarios with Mexico and America. It's not all happy. It's not all fantastic. There are sometimes disagreements between Mexico and the United States, but they are neighbors. They have to do well. So, Gunaybe, once we had a big meeting in Taksim Square saying, we want to go to Bulgaria to fight. There were hundreds of thousands of people who wanted to march and go to Bulgaria. Now, Bulgaria is our best friend. <laughs> now, in Bulgaria, there is 25% Turkish living there. Who are you going to fight? In Greece, who are you going to fight with? 20% of Greek people speak Turkish at all, because they came from Turkey. Same thing in Israel. Same thing in Egypt. Now, Egypt, why we... We start fighting with Egypt. We didn't fight. It was created to fight. And now it is all settled. We are having good relations with Egypt. We'll have very good relations with Israel. Look, F-16s repairs were always been done in Israel. Nobody knows this. Many of the materials are still coming from Israel. They are doing business military-wise. Kaiti, actually normal. 
Now, <clears throat> if you put problems on the table, then you create a big case, and then there will be a big fight after that. But if you get them small and say, look, uh, it's a tiny thing, you will settle tomorrow morning, let's go to dinner now, it's finished. <laughs> you go to dinner, have uh, drinks, and be happy. Yeah, well, yeah well, let, me, let me add a couple things. Because your question is very important. To be honest with you, I don't think sanctions work. Let me tell you the first, last thing first. Uh, but let's go back to this position. So Turkey, from its foundation, uh, it's a you know democratic republic, part of the Western pact. And before you point that, it was Cold War. So we have the iron block countries and the Western countries, the NATO. Turkey was part of the NATO, and it was a democracy, and it is a democracy. Turkey, so the U.S. and the West, including European Union and all other countries, they treat Turkey differently than China because their expectation from Turkey is different. They see Turkey as an ally. They see Turkey as a democracy. Turkey is not Egypt or Iraq or Syria. Turkey is, you know, the again... Turkish democracy is not comparable to those countries. Turkish institutions, the governments we you know, got all from Ottoman Empire, and the businesses, they are more developed. They have corporate structure. They have institutional history. So we cannot compare Turkey to those Middle Eastern countries. Turkey's comparison is Italy. Turkey's comparison is Germany. Turkey is that level country. So because of that, of those type of expectations. So, okay, U.S. may tolerate some human rights abuses or some certain, you know, the democratic issues in China, Russia, it's not important for them. But Turkey is part of the club. So because of that, the businesses shouldn't take all those criticism very seriously. Those are governments and they say, okay, as Urbe said, let's go to dinner. So when you go to dinner, you discuss, you say, okay, there are certain other aspects. And we, Turks, for instance, Turkey support the Kurdistan administration in northern Iraq. Why? Because they put a line between them and terrorist PKK, right? right. So Turkey's fight is not against the, you know, the Kurdish people or the autonomous regime. It is not about that. The U.S. needs to understand Turkey's fight there is against the terrorists, and they are, you know, the uh, not just terrorizing Turkey, but the, their neighbors as well. So what I am saying is, you go to dinner and you tell them that, because again, we are not, we can have good relations with Russia and China. Don't misunderstand me, but we need to, we need to stick with our allies, our friends. Turkey is part of NATO, and a valuable member. Turkey's importance is NATO is more than, you know, the Greece and many other countries. I'm not belittling the others, but really Turkey is one of the key countries in NATO. And we need to act accordingly. Turkey needs to act accordingly and the U.S. needs to act accordingly. And this is not a problem of private businesses. Businesses, they should focus on good relations, develop trade. And going back to your last question again. I never believe sanctions work. So sanctions, uh, not an effective policy. It may, it may work. I mean, if it worked, U.S. used the sanctions against Iran for, you know, the many years. And Iranian re regime of mullahs, they are still there. And they are still repressing their own people. And it is not working. So that's my answer to your question, yeah. Yeah, you know, in the United States, there's this BDS movement, boycott, divestment, sanctions, usually targets Israel. Uh, that's the Turkish American National Steering Committee. We have, uh, or I have, um, appeared in the state legislature to say BDS is a bad idea yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's punitive towards the people of a country. In that respect, it's very discriminatory and full of prejudice. 
uh, and it doesn't achieve any good, it actually hardens people who need to be softened uh, by creating clicks around them because the people are so upset. Now in California, there's a law that's being considered to punish Turkey. Uh, United California invests a good portion of its pension funds in, in Turkish state bonds. And the Armenian lobby is successfully lobbying for a bill that says divest from Turkey, take your pension funds out of Turkey. And, uh, and the law is so bad that it says, even though that's going to be a bad decision because you're going to lose a lot of money, uh, the fund managers will, be held, will not be held liable for that bad decision. So, uh, so there is now BDS in the United States at the state levels, uh, uh, Turkey as well. Um, and I think uh, this is a uh, an important issue for, of course, Turkish American organizations, trade organizations, commercial organizations, but also very much for uh, the Turkish American Business Development Council and the Turkish Union of Chambers of Commerce and TAIK. Uh, this uh, punitive and prejudicial, uh, hateful uh, legislation that's under the category of BDS has to be stopped. I agree, uh, definitely, definitely. And uh, Turkey is not, I mean, of course, uh, the U.S. potential sanctions against Turkey would not be like against Iran or Russia. It is different. But, and I think U.S. even using those sanctions, you know, the discussions or the bars as a deterrent. So they are trying to deter Turkey for doing certain things or whatever, but I don't think it, it's working and it's not gonna work. So uh, that is a terrible idea. And I'm glad, I know, for instance, uh, from my colleagues at, uh, uh, my colleagues at the uh, TAIC, they, they are kind of uh, worried about such, you know, the, uh, sanctions, but uh, we don't take them seriously, but we need to also take them seriously. When I say we, businesses shouldn't take that seriously. But you, Gunai, your association, TASC, ATA, all those organizations, the advocacy groups, you guys need to take that very seriously, yes. Well, interestingly, when it comes to commercial, uh, it comes to sanctions, uh, we do need strong private sector involvement because those businesses are going to be harmed. It's not. It's, it's, it is targeting those businesses. It's targeting the people uh, because it's punitive against the government. Uh, and um, so, for example, on the pension funds, the teachers' associations, the policemen's associations, the law enforcement associations in California are on board. They say. Don't mess with my pension fund. Exactly. So yeah. that's why it's not doable. I mean, this is the financial world. So Armenian cause, if it comes to American, you know, the average Joe's pension, it is not going to, he doesn't care. He uh, His focus, I mean, for instance, those ESG, environment, social, you know, the concerns of those uh, and govern, environment, social governance issues of investment, there are funds like that, but if you look at the total mutual funds and the pensions, we are talking about less than 2%. It is nothing. California can do that. Yes, it is a very political issue, but you are right. When it comes, this is the, so the Turkish Association, which I'm a member of the, you know, the, uh, the umbrella organization here, we should focus on the telling that to American people. I mean, for instance, uh, again, as you said, those teacher unions, it is their money. It's their, you know, the retirement, all their, and it's the, for most of the Americans, it's their old savings. So yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I think the, I think the law is going to pass. Uh, okay. However, will it go into implementation uh, is a question. And will it contravene with the federal foreign policy powers of the United States? Highly likely. Uh, a very important case uh, uh, the Armenian lobby lost was Movsesian against uh, Victoria. Uh, 
uh, bank and a German bank. Um, and there, 11 to 0, the Court of Appeals said, do not mess with U.S. foreign policy. A state cannot mess with the U.S. foreign policy. Um, but let's see how the U.S. United States is going to go on these issues. Will it give a green light to these state-based uh, sanctions? And, you know, if California starts it, uh, other states will follow. New York, big states will follow. Uh, and so there, there is a domino effect of this uh, bad law and bad policy, and the correction of it has to occur pretty quickly. Uh, so what are these? Uh, we have a few minutes left now, around seven minutes. Urabi, what are the sectors uh, that we should be exploring? Uh, we see a under uh, underemployed uh, um under under uh, utilized uh, sectors that Turkey can offer United States and vice versa. Um, uh, how is, uh, for example, medical tourism in Turkey? And secondly, how is uh, Turkish ex exports to the United States? Where can they be better? Medical medical tourism, you said, you touched a very good point. Uh, today we have a large medical tourism towards Turkey. Uh, now, a friend of mine, uh, he's a lawyer, also a consultant in Middle East. He said, I have some rich people from um, Dubai, living in Dubai, there and there, who wants to have Turkish nationality. I said, why? What happened? He said they want to buy, uh, according to the Turkish law, an apartment, a building, $300,000, $400,000, come in and then uh, have a Turkish passport, a Turkish nationality. I said, what is the game behind it? He said, well, they are old, uh, elder people. If they got sick, your hospitals are free of charge. And you take care of them first class, so <laughs> they're they're relaxed with this. Yeah, and not just that, Urabi. It's also the quality, very high Turkish medical, Turkish doctors are great, very uh, high quality. Are, yeah. Look, I know the hospitals in America. Mm -hmm. I know the hospitals in England. Uh, you wouldn't go in England a, a hospital and leave your dog even. <laughs> it's terrible. I mean, every room is with. 50, 60 people, and here, a girl here in Bodrum, there is a, an American girl who was saying maybe I had the COVID, and we sent her to the hospital. Actually, she had a terrible flu, but she was in a single bedroom and treated well. She, she, she thanked a lot, anyhow. Uh, this is behind. But talking about democracy, talking about democracy, I'm saying to everybody, please show me one country in Europe who has one member of the parliament elected. None. Until 1935. In 1935, Turkish Republic had 17 women parliament members. We're going to wrap it up soon. We have three minutes left. Okay. Uh, 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 in terms of the sectors, let me touch one point. It is very important. Yeah. You know, Turkish companies, the construction companies, development companies are very successful. And most of and the big ones, the major ones are regional or global players. They did great job in Russia, in Africa, all over Africa, Central Asia, from, you know, the Kazakhstan all the way to, you know, the Georgia and uh, Ukraine, all over the places. So now we have this infrastructure project in the US. Obama started first talking about that. Trump really wanted to do that, but he failed. And now Biden wants to do it. And we, I think the Republicans are going to support that as well. It's just about how to spend money issue. 
But we are talking about between three to nine trillion dollars investment. And that includes, you know, the improving bridges, the uh, airports. For instance, when we talk about airports, the, most of the American airports are joke when you compare to the new Turkish airports, the one in, for instance, the new, not just new Istanbul one. For instance, the Elaz Atatürk Havalimanı. It is way better than when you compare to small cities in the U.S. So there are lots of infrastructure projects. And to beat them, you really enter into the U.S. market and be a player. So I think really good chance for Turkish contractors, construction companies to grow in the U.S. because this is not going to be next year or two. This infrastructure investment, we really need it here in the U.S. We need to improve our infrastructure. Right. So huge opportunities, and we already, you know, the advised our members, the association members, but using, you know, the, this opportunity, your channel, I invite all Turkish companies who wants to enter into the U.S., the infrastructure, the construction companies, contractors, great opportunity, this is the time. And definitely they should be members of the American Turkish Business Development Council. And you'll be there to guide them through that as advisor to the president. Uh, <laughs> and I want to... By the way, um, when you look at it, about the construction, there is one Turkish company, a contractor company, who works in New York. But he's been suffering since so many years with the syndicate. You know, the union uh, labor. Uh, so there are big fights going on, and but the guy has two hotels over there, and he still <laughs> insists that he should do business in New York. Now, I studied all the way through, and found out that only Turkish constructors might do business in the uh, east. Let's say around um, uh, Santa, uh, around the uh, Sacramento area, that, that uh, because there are labor easy, very easy labor agreements. Now, Turkish workers are hard workers. If Turkish companies, when they start a job, they want to work 24 hours. Can you work 24 hours in the United States? This, the labor organization will not let you do it. So it's all uh, depends on the permissions. Uh, Turkish companies will need good labor lawyers. Uh, you know, I see Turkey as taking very good care of its own people. May that be medical, uh, education, uh, and especially refugees, four million refugees from Syria refugees. alone. Um, you touched a good point. Yep, I'm wrapping this up. Uh, I want to thank the American Turkish uh, Business Development Council, President Ur Terzoğlu, and President and advisor to the President Ihan Geçki for for joining me today on Task Roots. Uh, continue to watch us. We're reaching more than two, actually up to two million uh, viewers per month at this time. Uh, and we'll be growing. Uh, we thank our great team of young IT people uh, who, um, who, uh, who run Task TV, such a strong volunteer core involved in this. And, uh, and we look forward to uh, hosting AT. BDC, uh, the American Turkish Business Development Council uh, in Washington, D.C. One thing for sure, if you want to wrap it up, finally, Ihan, uh, are there uh, uh, post-COVID, do we have conferences coming up? Well, uh, I guess, yes. go ahead, if I may, I do thank you, Gunai. We're old friends, but uh, beyond that, you have a good mission. You are uh, one of the main key men in the Turkish delegation in Washington. Thank you. Right. And um, you have a good energetic ambassador. That's right, Robert College. To make your life easier, our life also easier. 
because he graduated in Washington. He knows the streets of uh, Washington. Yani kaldırımlarını iyi biliyor Washington'ın. <laughs> Sidewalks. <laughs> so, I had an, an opportunity uh, to walk with him. He loves to so exercise. We're lucky this period. And if we do not take the advantage of this, these years, these months, then we'll never succeed again. <laughs> so let's work hard. This is why Ilan is also working hard to get this wrapped up. And soon uh, we'll be on the televisions to announce it uh, worldwide. So people also will get jealous. <laughs> But as I said, and as Ilan confirmed, we're not competing in any organization. We're just trying to help our country and our friendly company, United States to meet in this certain good point all together and make people's life happy. Thank you, Urabi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ilhan. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you to all our viewers. Join us again uh, on Task TV, Task Roots. Thank you. Thank you for the organization for this event. Thank you, sir.